Good morning. This is our midweek recording, and we're back in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We tried to record this last week and had a system failure, uh, so we've got everything dialed in. I think we had a little bit of human error, a little bit of uh, technical error, but well, let's let's proceed. We want to go to prayer. We ask the Lord to come meet with us today. Our Lord Jesus, we come in your name, where two or more are gathered in your name, you are present. We ask you, Lord, to have your hand upon this Bible study today. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place as we deliver the word of God. Let it be by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to blow the shofar. When we, when we come to the word of God, we understand that all scripture is given by God and, and men are inspired uh, to speak and write the words that the Lord has given. The Apostle Paul is speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit here and giving instruction and correction to the Corinthian church. In 1 Corinthians 12, he talks about spiritual gifts and diversities of gifts. And, and then he gives the example, the comparison of the, the church to the human body. All the parts are necessary. Not one is elevated above the other and so on. Uh, but it's, it's so important that we understand that spiritual gifts, these are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They are given by the Holy Spirit. It's not to promote each individual or one individual above another. These gifts of the Holy Spirit are to build up the body of Christ. And that's the purpose of these gifts. Let's, let's get into our study here, beginning 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Now let's stop right there. With verse 1, uh, he's saying concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant. The problem they were having in the Corinthian church is that they had received the Lord. They had received the power of the Holy Spirit. Gifts of the Spirit were operating, but they were ignorant of the operation of spiritual gifts. They were ignorant of the purpose of spiritual gifts. And some began to elevate themselves. Others began to think, well, I have no value in the body of Christ. And that's the work of the enemy. That doesn't have anything to do with Holy Spirit, uh, God's purpose in, in the church. He says, you know that you were Gentiles carried away uh, and carried away to these dumb idols. However, you were led. So they were, they were carried away by false spirits. And, and he wants them to tune in to the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. No one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. The, what he's giving you in, in verse 3 here is a test. Test the spirits. Uh, are those spirits saying negative about the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are those spirits testifying that Jesus is Lord? That comes by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, they're speaking by the Holy Spirit. Where there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but the same God who works all in all. So it, it's, this, it, it's, it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit involved when the gifts of the Spirit are operating to build up the body of Christ. But the same God who works all in all. And the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Not for the benefit of that individual, but for the profit of the whole church, for the building up of the church. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom is, is, is God's wisdom according to his plans and purposes, what he wants to do in a life, what he wants to do in the church. And then the word of knowledge through the same Spirit the word of knowledge is, is God give, revealing. God doesn't give us all his knowledge. We would, our, we would explode. We can't handle all the knowledge that God has. But he gives us bits of information by the Holy Spirit sometimes as to a certain detail uh, that will help somebody in their walk with Christ. And so uh, we need these gifts operating in the church. And to another, faith by the same Spirit. Now, every Christian has faith, but this is the gift of faith. 
to believe for supernatural things. Uh, uh, back in, in, in about 100 years ago, maybe 150 years ago, a man named Mueller began to start these, these, these orphanages in England. And uh, he, would, he would just believe God that he was going to be able to receive the funds, the property, the housing for these orphans uh, in England. And he began to take in the children and sometimes uh, they didn't have enough room and they would believe for another piece of property or a bigger house or whatever and God would supply. And one incident I remember is they, they sat, they would, this happened more than once, they would sit down at the table and, and they didn't have enough food for all the children. And he would tell them, uh, let's give thanks. They would sit down at the table as they were beginning, like preparing to have a meal and there, were no, there was no food on the table and they would give thanks and, and, and when the prayer was over, someone would knock on the door, a local grocer or farmer, whatever, walking in with food for their meal. Uh, this is the gift of faith, believing for things that cannot be seen, believing for the miraculous. And so it's, it's not just faith for salvation, it's a gift of faith and for ministry. Mueller needed this gift of faith in order to see about those children and God honored it. He believed and he trusted in a supernatural way and God answered in a supernatural way. Uh, to another, gifts of healings. And, and notice it's plural. There are gifts of healing. Some, some people tend to have a certain gift of compassion, ministering to those who are hurting, troubled in their, in their mind or their emotions. Others have certain uh, gifts when they pray with people, they recover from certain diseases. Uh, this, this, we, we know a man who prays in, in our church who prays for people for their teeth to be healed and, and their gums and, and, and roots of the teeth and so on. And, and God does miraculous things. These, are, these things are real. To another working of miracles, to another prophecies and working of miracles, uh, when Jesus was, when, when there were people troubled and he would pray for them and they would be set free from demonic bondage, um, and this was called the working of miracles. Uh, and and how, oh, how that's needed today. We have people wanting the streets with severe mental illness and demonic bondage, bondage uh, drug addiction. They've been involved in the occult and their minds are twisted and all kinds of demonic activity. This gift of miracles is needed today to see people free. To another prophecy, and prophecy here is not, is not prophecy in the sense of, of a fortune telling, foretelling the future. Uh, it's for exhortation uh, uh, and, and, and uh, edification and comfort to the church. The words spoken to the church to guide the church, to bring uh, subtle correction, to to bring comfort and so that the church will be healed and the church will grow. Uh, there's revelation involved. There are some things that are spoken about the future, but that's not the specialty of prophecy to the church. The specialty is exhortation, edification, and comfort. To another, discerning of spirits. We talked about the gift of miracles where Jesus cast it out, cast out un unholy spirits. And the gift of discernment will, will give the one who's praying for people revelation as to what kind of demonic activity is involved, what kind of unholy spirit activity, so that they can take authority over it. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, different kinds of tongues. We saw on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, on that day in the upper room, when they received the Holy Spirit, uh, they went down on afterwards they went down on the street and they began to speak it was a feast day it was the feast of first fruits of pentecost all of all of the people were there from different lands and they spoke different languages and these these galileans came down out of the upper room and began to speak to them in their own languages and this was astounding these people knew how how can they possibly know all these languages and it was uh, different kinds of tongues by the holy spirit it says uh, the interpretation of tongues sometimes people will speak in a heavenly language and somebody will receive 
an interpretation, uh, what it means. Not, not, a, not, a, uh, not a direct translation word for word, but the, the message or the theme of what God is speaking to people. But, uh, but one and the same Spirit works all these things. See, it's not that person. It's, the, it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And one and the same Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit, works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to believers individually as the Holy Spirit wills. Uh, and then he goes on, because, because they didn't have understanding, because they were ignorant of spiritual gifts, they, they began to elevate themselves or, or push others down or whatever. Uh, uh, but there's, there's unity. Unity is necessary in the body of Christ. And therefore, we have to humble ourselves, not, not puff ourselves up or elevate ourselves, but everyone is connected and all have great value in the body of Christ. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Christ is not divided. Our physical body is not to be divided. Neither is the church body to be divided. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we have all been made to drink into the one Spirit, for in fact, the body is not, is not one member, but many. We are all one in Christ, but we are many members and diverse personalities and character and gifting. And it says, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? How ridiculous would that be for your foot to say to your hand, uh -uh, I'm not part of the body, I'm just going to walk off and do what I want and not be connected uh, that would be ridiculous. If the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, therefore is it not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? Uh, if the whole were hearing, where would the smelling be? Where, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as it pleased him. And if, if they were all one member, where would, where would the body be? So there would be no body. If all, if all the parts were the same, there would be no body. We need the various parts to come together. Just He uses that example of the physical body, and it's so necessary that we understand this. Just like our physical body is one body, but has all these different members, all these different parts, but it's connected and functions as one. So is the church, with Jesus being the head, and we are the many members. Now indeed there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. No one in the body of Christ can be dismissed. If someone is a uh, uh, weaker or, 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 or they have a, a gift that's not heard from a lot, doesn't mean they're not necessary, they're very necessary. There are many people that are intercessors that spend a lot of time quietly praying for the church. And if it wasn't for their prayers, the church would fall apart. And those members of the body which we think less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. Our unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. Parts that are exposed to out in the open and speaking uh, and recognized have no need to be elevated. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, and that, that, that the members should have the same care one for another. The members should have the same care for one for another. There's no preference in the body of Christ. That new believer uh, has, has the same care as the, as the, the preacher or teacher uh, the leaders in the church. Every, every member, the quiet member, has the same care as the most vocal member. Um, the same care one for another. And if, the member, if, a, if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. We have to have care and compassion. If someone's going through something, our heart hurts. We cry out to the Lord for them. Or if one member is honored, 
All the members rejoice with it. Now here's where jealousy, we have to come against that spirit of jealousy. It doesn't belong in our life. If, if, a, if a believer is being honored or blessed, we need to rejoice with them. We rejoice with it. So this is important to the body of Christ. There's, it's not keeping up with the Joneses or anything like that or, or being jealous because somebody has something you don't have or they're being honored and you weren't honored. We're, we need to rejoice with those that are being honored. Now you are the body of Christ. Many think, well, one day this church is going to all get tuned up and we will then we'll be the body of Christ. Paul says, now, now you are the body of Christ. Get it right now. Do it right now. Do it correctly. Now you are the body of Christ and the members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. And he goes on to list some ministries here. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers. And after that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps and administrations, various uh, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. When he says earnestly desire the best gifts, we need to have a love for the Lord and a love for the body of Christ. And our desiring best gifts, we need to desire those gifts that will excel at building up the body of Christ to bring growth and maturity and strength to the body of Christ. Edify, build up, build up. That word edify means to build up. Build up the body of Christ. That needs to be in our heart and in our life. Our desire is to build up the body of Christ. And then he says, and yet I show you a more excellent way. And that last verse there, that last half of the last verse, is introducing the next chapter, chapter 13, the love chapter. He says, I show you a more excellent way. Yeah, it's great to have these spiritual gifts operating in the church and in your individual life. But if you don't have love, it doesn't mean anything. So love is the more excellent way. The gifts have to be carried. They have to be delivered. Carried and then delivered in love and ministered in love. Love is the more excellent way. So I pray that this helps you a little bit. And as the Apostle Paul uh, cried out to the Corinthian church, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. And we'll, we'll talk about spiritual gifts a little bit more. Chapter 13 is the love chapter, the more excellent way. And then chapter 14, Paul talks about when the whole church comes together and these spiritual gifts are operating, especially the, the utterance gifts, the gifts that have to do with speaking. And so we want to go to prayer now. I pray that this uh, will help those that maybe have never heard much of this teaching. Maybe uh, some, some Bible teachers and leaders avoid these chapters uh, about spiritual gifts because they want all the focus to be on them rather than other people in the church speaking out. God wants to use the body of Christ uh, in these last days. The, this is body ministry. This is where everyone ministers in the church. Let's go to prayer. Our Lord Jesus, we come to you today, and I thank you for this chapter. Paul was uh, teaching here, exhorting, uh, do not be ignorant of spiritual gifts, and he was correcting some problems in the church. And, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that this will bring some answers, some instruction, some correction where needed, and Lord, growth and strength to the body of Christ. We pray, Lord, your blessing over this study to the church, to the believers today that are listening. And I pray, Lord, for that one that's listening today. Maybe they bumped into this channel. Maybe they ran into it by accident. And they don't know, Lord, much about you, but they know uh, I need something in my life. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. I need the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that they will cry out today, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I pray for that one to have a hunger for the word of God. Confess your sins with, with a contrite heart, a broken heart, and ask Jesus to forgive you and come into your life and be Lord of your life. And then, Open up your Bible. Be, begin to read the Gospel of John. And, and, and Lord, I pray, bless 
and give that one hunger for the word of God and to know how much you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And we look forward to another encouraging word on the weekend. God bless.